I was in Amsterdam a long time ago, about 30 years ago. Yeah. And I remember the city for its canal system. Yeah. For the painter and the philosopher Rembrandt. Yeah. Rembrandt place. A very liberal culture. Famous man. Um, and a culture that had no respect for any, any kind of religion. No. Um, a sort of um, irreverent culture. Rembrandt plain. Um, uh, <laughs> and people with multiple languages. Yeah. So, but um, over the years, over the past seven years, yeah, Holland is also a country which has a lot of um, reaction, antagonism, and hostility toward the Muslim immigrants from Morocco and Turkey, the kind of immigrants that influence your mind. Yeah. So what is going on in Holland? Um, a lot at the moment. Over the last two weeks, if you read the news or anybody... Uh, I followed. Yeah, if you follow, it's been very international. So we had a prime minister called Rutte. Uh, he's gone now. Uh, he was actually really with the Muslim culture. Now we have a person that's against the Muslim. And his name Are is... you referring to Geert Wilders? Geert Wilders. Well, he hasn't become the prime minister. He will become the prime minister. Yeah, well, he, he's already there. And um, he, he made some great... The, well, not great, pardon, uh, 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 horrible statements about the Muslim. Um, that he, I wouldn't say hated, but he disliked the belief in the culture of the Muslims. And it's that he holds Muslims and Islam responsible for the trouble of the world. Yeah. But the fact that Gideon Wilder's party uh, has become the most popular party means he has a lot of support. Holland. Well, he uh, he describes Holland as a country that has a lot of reaction, antagonism, and hostility towards you know the Muslim immigrants from Morocco and Turkey. Um, again, this is uh, this is the way the native people are reacting. But you know this this seems to fit very well with what Muhammad did, and. Um, these these Muslims, I think, are following his example um, in in immigrating to to non-Muslim lands. You know, just as with jihad, they had been doing this for over fourteen hundred years. And the and the real question here is, why are the native people reacting in the way that they are? Um, he says he says that Geert Wilders has made some horrible statements about the Muslims, but uh, then he admits that. He, he wouldn't say that Mr. Wilders disliked their, you know, he didn't hate their Muslim beliefs, but he disliked them. Um, I'm not sure what that says about your Wilders. I don't know anything really about what he believes, but th th this, that's a very positive statement, you know, coming from, from him. Um, so I think the, the, the native people there have, have a right again to know, um, about Islam, to know the truth about Islam and, and not be called Islamophobes, but to, to look at, you know, some of these passages. And, and, and of course, that requires them to have freedom of speech. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know about these other countries, but even here in America, I think we're, we're slowly losing our freedom of, sp of speech. And uh, we, we need to take note of what's happening here in Holland. Yeah, um, it, it, Muslims, I don't want them to be, if you are Muslim and watching now, don't be excited if Christians losing their freedom because you are next. You will lose also your freedom as well. But also the question is, if that th these countries, Western countries and European countries, that bad, the question is, is the Islamic countries better? <clears throat> Why Muslims coming to Western countries, why they are immigrating to Western countries if they are worse than your country. Yeah. Uh, if you coming to these countries, you need to think, ask yourself the question, why all Islamic countries, there's problem. Not even one Islamic country that you can give us as an example where Islam brought peace, uh, brought stability, there's problem in every single Islamic country. 
but now you're coming to Western countries and you're complaining about them, it doesn't work. Mm. Uh, I just pray that your your eyes would be open to, to the truth of the fact yeah. that there is a problem in Islam. That's why Islam not succeeding in any country. Uh, Greg? Oh, all right. Well, uh, just kind of touching, I, I wanted to look at the Quran and the character of Muhammad and the character of Jesus. Uh, Jesus said to go ahead and love your enemies, pray for them. Matthew 5, 43 and 44. Muhammad in the Quran, Surah 551, he said, take not the Jew and Christian as your friends. They're only friends among themselves. On his deathbed, Jesus went ahead and he looked down at his enemies in Matthew 27 in the Holy Angel and, and Luke also uh, the book of Luke, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Muhammad died from being poisoned. His wife, Aisha, which was a little girl at one time, uh, and she was 18 years old, uh, in his arms dying, his last words were curses on the Jews and curses on the Christians. Uh, I picked Jesus who said to put down the sword in Matthew 26. Surah 9.5, Muhammad picked up the sword. Jesus told his followers to go ahead and spread his words in love. Muhammad told his followers, the Surah of the Sword, Surah 9.5 again, to go ahead and use the sword against the Mushakim, against the polytheists, against the Kafirs. Uh, I pick Jesus. I pick love over hate. Amen. Yeah, if there's any comparison for him to to do before he converted to Islam, it should be the Bible and the Quran, Jesus and Muhammad, not people. Uh, everywhere you can go, you can find good people, bad people. Uh, Rachel? Oh, I disagree with that. Yeah. But, but go ahead. Add anything you want <laughs> about what we just watched. Uh, no, I agree that the example should not be people. It should be... Um... Jesus um, and Jesus said, "You shall know um, who the pro who what is a true and, and false prophet by their fruit." Um, like a good tree does not bear bad fruit, and a bad tree does not bear good fruit. And um, Jesus said, "There will come many false prophets, um, like sheep sheep or wolves in sheep's clothing." So we have to be discerning um, and help our Muslim friends um, see the truth about Muhammad. Um, and show them from their own sources. Otherwise, it's just our opinion versus their opinion. So, yeah. and, and remember, Muslims are victim of this religion, victim of the God of this world, mm -hmm. which in the Quran, in black and white, he admitted he is the God of this world, the best of all deceivers, according to the Bible, the father of lies. Uh, Muslims are not our enemies. Our enemy is Satan, and we want to see them coming to know Christ. I know they are responsible for what they believe. They are responsible for following Islam and choosing to follow Islam blindly. Um, my, my prayer that they may come to know Christ as a Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, as people, we don't want, as Christians, we don't want to take them as enemies. Yeah. We want to see them coming to know Christ as a Lord and Savior. We need to share the love of Christ with them. We need to separate Islam as a religion and Muslims as people. We have a problem with the teaching of Islam. But we, we want to see Muslims coming to know Christ. Yes, we have problems with some Muslims as well. I know there's, there are Muslims coming to the West and their goal and their ultimate goal to see uh, mm -hmm. Islam take over. And they can use deception and lies because in chapter 3, verse 50, chapter, two, sorry, chapter 3, verse 28, it says that you can lie. Uh, if you like, you can take the don't take the Christian and Jews as friends unless if you are afraid of your of them or something like that or for your safety you can giving you the permission it's called taqiya giving you the permission to lie and deceive. But I'm not saying that all Muslims telling you Islam is peaceful religion they're lying to you. Some of them they say it out of ignorance because they don't know what religion their religion really teaches. But the teaching of Islam is very clear it is built on deception. Um, I I know we uh, came to the hour mark and we little past that. But um, uh, Olin, any final remarks? We can go ahead and close this 
today. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, you know, my my main point again was that he doesn't really um, give us any kind of evidence or give us any kind of reason why anyone should become a Muslim. He uh, he only talks about how he feels, how you know nice Muslims have been to him. That was the you know the, the introduction um, to this. The vi first video that we watched set the stage for that argument to be made throughout the entire video. And as Rachel said very well, that you know that truth is not you know determined by popular opinion. That's, that's a fallacy to to even make that claim. Um, but um, we want we want no you know evidence. We want to hear some evidence. And uh, as Christians, we we believe that we have that kind of evidence. We can give you know historical arguments for the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Um, we can give scientific evidence for Christianity, we can, you know, the, the list goes on and on. And uh, that's the kind of thing that you, you, you expect to hear when you look at the title to this video. But uh, I don't think we got any of that. 